Hello everyone and welcome back to OpenShift Enterprise version 3.2 installation and configuration course and in this section I decided to add some bonus lectures for uh, some of the common and advanced administration tasks for your cluster and we will be starting by authentication providers and as always we'll be doing this on Amazon Cloud so we will be also touching some more areas of Amazon Web Services as part of these lectures. So authentication providers for OpenShift environment, you have many options to choose from. Uh, some of them are very basic like deny all and allow all and some of them are more complex. Uh, so let's discuss each one of these and see what it's all about. So when you set up an OpenShift enterprise environment, by default you get the deny all. So no one is allowed to access to this environment. Nobody can log into this environment. So after deny all, if you are developing an environment for like uh, demo purposes for your developers or for yourself on your own machine, you can use the allow all provider which allows anyone to log into your OpenShift environment. And we have the HT password. The HT password is a file based authentication provider. This is where users and their credentials are saved in a file on the file system and you just pass this file location to the configuration of your master nodes. And then you have the keystone which is based on OpenStack Keystone Server authentication and you have the LDAP which is uh, in my opinion the most common feature or the most common option for any enterprise you usually have your Active Directory or other sort of LDAP server in your enterprise and you want just to attach your environment to this directory server and let users authenticate with their own like Windows accounts or something so this is what we'll be doing in this lecture we'll be going through configuring an active directory on amazon cloud and we'll be using this active directory as our ldap provider for the openshift environment and then you have basic authentication and basic authentication is to let your environment authenticate against another server you have somewhere through http requests so you can just have your uh, login url which is based on basic authentication in your server a tomcat server or something else and you use this to also authenticate users to your OpenShift environment. And you have the request header. And in this authentication provider, you will be authenticating users based on a specific header in their requests. And this has to be combined with another provider, which will actually add this header to users' requests. And you can authenticate users based on their GitHub account. And you can authenticate users based on GitLab account. Both of these are Git servers. And you can use a Google account to authenticate users and you can use OpenID. For all of the uh, last four options, you have to obtain the token and talk to the APIs related to these providers. So this is the environment we currently have. We have created a virtual private cloud to host our environment and we've created a public subnet with uh, internet gateway attached to it. And we have created uh, three EC2 instances, one master and two nodes. And we had a hosted zone that's resolving our nodes internally within the public subnet and we have a public hosted zone that resolves to our master node from the outside world. These are the changes we'll be adding to our environment. We'll be adding two private subnets uh, which will host our Active Directory and the reason for having two is that uh, this is a requirement when you are creating the Active Directory on Amazon Cloud to have two different subnets in two different zones. This is for high availability reasons. So we will be adding two private subnets. It's a private because we don't need to access this Active Directory from outside of our uh, AWS VPC. And only our OpenShift environment needs to access these servers. So keeping these subnets private is actually preferred for this uh, reason. And in our public subnet, we'll be adding a Windows machine and we will attach this Windows machine to the domain so we can use it to control and manage the Active Directory. Okay, so switching to my AWS console and we will start building this uh, Active Directory. So on the console, I will actually visit my VBC section first to create the two new private subnets. I already have one public for OpenShift and I will create two more private subnets. This will go into OpenShift VPC and the availability zone I will choose to be. They have to be in two different availability zones. This is a must for Active Directory and I will go with 10.0.2 
24 for my sidar. Yes. Okay, and I will create another one in a different availability zone. Going to my VBC, I will do this in 2C, 10.0.3.0-24. I don't need to do anything else for these private subnets, they are private, so I will not attach an internet gateway, and they already have in the root tables allowing all traffic within the same VPC. So I will now go to the directory service section of AWS and I will start by creating a symbol active directory. So this is the domain name, I will name it directory.oce demo and this will also form how is the base DN for my LDAP looks like. The short name is LDAP, this is just for display purposes and this is the administrator user. I will use this user to log into my Windows machine when I let it join the domain so I can administrate this active directory and I will just create a password a description so this is open shift ldab and I go with a small I will choose my VPC here and I will choose the private subnets 2.0 and 3.0. These are the two private subnets that I have just created. Create symbol. I will not save any passwords. And it will take some time until it's fully created. So meanwhile, I'll um, uh, start a Windows machine so I can administrate this Active Directory when it's up. I'll go to my EC2 section. And I will launch an instance. And for this, I have to choose a Windows machine. So I'll just go with Windows Server 2008. Which is eligible for free tier. And I will go with T2 Micro. I don't need anything larger than that. I'll create this in my VBC and it has to go to the public subnet so I can connect to this one from my remote desktop. So it's going to the public. I will have to assign a public IB for it so I can log into this machine. You can configure from here to join a domain, but I found that this is more complicated and it was a little bit buggy to me, so I will just uh, go through the Windows configurations to join the domain. So, nothing else here. I will go with default storage, and I will name this my Active Directory Windows Machine. And I will create a new security group for this. I only need um, remote desktop to be open so I will not open any more boards for this machine and if we need to open any boards if we like install an LDAP client that we need to use to connect to Active Directory and needs more boards to be open and so we can come and update this security group. So I'll name this my Active Directory security group. And I will launch my machine. I will use my OpenShift key. Okay. So meanwhile, until this is ready, let's go to the directory service and see if our active directory is... Yeah, it's active now, so we are good to go. Let's go back to EC2.
to be able to log into this machine as I have chosen OpenShift key as my uh, access key for this machine, I have to get the password or decrypt the password from this key. So here I, I have chosen the key file uh, from my file system and I will decrypt password and this will give me the password I can use to log into the machine with administrator user. I'll just copy this password and I will open my remote desktop. So in remote desktop I have to enter the IB generated for my machine here so it's 54 one, two, three. So administrator and I'll paste my password here and I will not join any domain. I don't need this as well. Connect. So I have logged into my Windows machine and what I will do next is to configure this machine to connect to the domain. So the first things are to add the domain to the DNS configurations of my network. To the local area connection viewing that properties into that TCP IBV4 properties and I will use this the domain created for my active directory and to get these IBs I will go to my active directory and I check the IBs created for this active directory so it created two instances for me one in each subnet and these are the IBs I should use for this and 10.0.3.212 okay and then I will configure my computer to use this domain here in the computer name I will change settings hit change computer name I can change this to something meaningful to uh, why I'm using it so I'm, I'm using it as Active Directory Manager and I will use the domain direct directory dot OSE demo and this will ask me for the uh, Active Directory administrator username and password that I have created as part of creating this Active Directory. This was administrator and my password. Welcome to the domain and I need to restart my machine to reflect these changes and log in as the domain administrator. That's fine. Okay. Close and restart. So now I will log in to the domain. So my domain is directory.ose demo and I will just remove this local and I will use the password I have created as part of provisioning the Active Directory. Okay. Connect. And now I logged into this machine as a directory administrator so I can manage this active directory by viewing users, adding users and deleting users, creating users and groups and so on and this is what we'll be doing right now. But before that we have to uh, enable the active directory services. So I will go to server manager.
and in the features I will add features and I will add remote server administration tools next okay so I got to the results and it needs to restart my computer so I will restart one more time I will again connect as domain administrator so logging into my domain so getting the confirmation that everything has been installed successfully I will close these windows and now I have the tools needed to manage this Active Directory. I'll go to Server. I will go to Administrative Tools. And I will go to Active Directory Users and Computers. And as I've already logged into this machine as a administrator of this Active Directory, I can access the Active Directory and I can view the users and do whatever I need with this Active Directory. So first, I will be creating a binding user that I can use to bind my servers to this LDAP server. I will name this guy root. And I will just let him log in without changing the password. And I will create a developer user that I can use with my OpenShift environment. Okay, so now I have my Active Directory ready and um, away from using this with OpenShift, this is actually an Active Directory on Amazon Web Services Cloud, so you can use this with any other environment you need. And in the next lecture, we'll configure our OpenShift environment to use this Active Directory as its LDAP provider for the environment. Thank you.